ship roll would be the center of this day that would live in infamy. December 7th would be a day two nations would be at war. Imperial Japan and the United States of America. It would be a war between two admirals. Admiral Husband E. Kimmel for the United States and Admiral Isaraki Yamamoto for Imperial Japan. This would be the day that would forever change America. There would also be other players in this arena of history that would be involved in what happened this day at Pearl Harbor, Hawaii. Rare Admiral James O. Richardson. Admiral Richardson told President FDR that it was a mistake to leave all the battleships bottled up in Pearl Harbor. Admiral Richardson was relieved from his duties there in February 1941. Admiral Kimmel would assume command that same month. Nine months before Japan's sneak attack at Pearl Harbor. The attack that Admiral Yamamoto would eventually call Operation Hawaii. The other major player of this arena were Lieutenant General Walter C. Short of the U.S. Army. General Short's career would end that day as well. For Imperial Japan, this attack would determine who would control Asia and the Pacific Ocean. Players for Imperial Japan for this fateful day would be Emperor Showa Hirohito. Emperor Hirohito was a peaceful leader. He did not believe that war was the answer. But it was really Imperial Japan's Prime Minister, Medici Toho, who was the country's decision maker. Prime Minister Medici Toho, 1941 to 1944. It was a decision of the Prime Minister Toho and Amo Yamamoto to go to war with the United States of America. The other key players in this day of history for Imperial Japan were Japan's liner ship, the Tyro, Tyro Maro. This was the last ship of Imperial Japan to dock at Pearl Harbor before
the sneak attack on Pearl Harbor. The Tayo Maro carried with her spies from Japan to Hawaii. Takio Yoshikawa. Yoshikawa would spy out Hawaii and map it for Japan's Imperial Intelligence. Captain Kanji Ogawa was a naval intelligence officer for Imperial Japan. Captain Ogawa knew the Americans well and documented the island and Pearl Harbor well. These two spies believed that after the attack, they would be arrested by the Americans. The Tayo Maro would leave Pier 8 for the last time. On December 6, 1941, before the attack on Pearl Harbor by Imperial Japan, the admirals of Imperial Japan's Navy would hold war games in Tokyo and practice, practice, and practice the sneak attack on Pearl Harbor. After the war games were over, the decision was final. Admiral Yamamoto and the combined fleet of the Empire of Japan would attack from the north and attack Hawaii as the next picture would show how it was done. The Navy pilots of Imperial Japan wanted to attack a third time. But Admiral Yamamoto was against it for several reasons. The weather in the north of the Pacific was getting colder and Admiral Yamamoto already knew that Imperial Japan had awaken a sleeping giant. It would be Commander Mitsuo Fujita who lead the airstrikes towards Pearl Harbor that fateful day. Naval Aerial Reconnaissance Plane would fly over Japan to discover Japan's Imperial Navy had disappeared. However, Admiral Yamamoto had just one big question. Where had all the U.S. Naval aircraft carriers disappeared to? Admiral Kimball's question would be, where did all the Imperial Japanese aircraft carriers disappear to? Only time would tell who would have the most superior navy in the Pacific Ocean. Soon, battleships like the USS New Jersey would become obsolete and the aircraft carriers would become the new
Military power on the high seas. Days before the attack, however, Washington, D.C. was trying to negotiate peace with Tokyo, Japan. But the long process of negotiating with the Imperial Japan proved fruitless. The winds of war was looming for both nations. The U.S. Army and Navy had a new machine called Purple. This machine was a cold breaking machine like the one in the next picture shows. Days before the attack, the key players in Washington knew that war between Imperial Japan and the United States was inevitable. Secretary of the Navy, Frank Knox. Secretary of War, Henry Simpson. Secretary of State, Cordell Hall. These three key players in Washington knew war with Imperial Japan was over the horizon. Operation Magic was busy gathering more intelligence about what Imperial Japan was up to. President FDR would send a memo to Imperial Japan that the only way peace could happen between Japan and America was for Imperial Japan to cease its hostilities with China and get out of Indochina. Prime Minister Mideki Toho sadly rejects FDR's suggestions for peace. In order for Imperial Japan to be the superior nation in Asia, it needed raw materials that Indochina offered and the oil the United States of America had. The next few pictures show Imperial Japan's aggressive movement in Asia and the Pacific Ocean. Imperial Japan was on the move. Soon, the United States of America would find itself at war with nations called the Axis of Evil. These three nations would be Nazi Germany, Fascist Italy, and Imperial Japan. Only time w would tell who was the most superior nation on earth. Exhilarating exercise, competitive excitement, rewarding experiences. Put every member of your family on the fast track with Michigan BMX. Admissions free 
and equipment affordable. Get the gang together for a fun, wild ride. Get the jump now on a track near you at MIBMX.com. There are many statistics in our lives, but they never matter until we become one. My only son became a statistic. Stand up and be counted to end the cycle of violence. Log on to thepeacealliance.org to find out how you can get involved. Back in the States, most people do not believe Japan would go to war with them. It was unthinkable. It was unthinkable that the U.S. would be fighting a war on three fronts at the same time. World War II would test the willpower of the people of the Americans. In Europe, two famous generals would arise for the Americans. General Dwight D. Eisenhower. General Eisenhower will be fighting Germans in Europe. The war in Germany began on the 1st of September, 1939. Germany, Italy, and Japan would eventually all sign a pact. in agreement with each other to become known as the Axis. Soon another very popular general would arise for the Americans as well. General George S. Patton. Both generals would have their hands full fighting the enemy in Europe. War with Italy began on 10th of July, 1943. However, back in Hawaii of December 1941, Christmas was approaching and sounds of peace on earth was in the air except for the Imperial Japanese Navy. Another general that would be a rising hero for Americans would be General Douglas MacArthur. MacArthur would be in command of the Philippines, an island Imperial Japan desperately needed and wanted. So it was thought that this is where Imperial Japan would sneak attack and not Hawaii. So General MacArthur was placed on the alert here. While peace negotiations were going on with Japan, the Atlantic Navy fleet had to worry about two things here. 
the German battleship Bismarck. And German U boats. Before Pearl Harbor, here's what the nine battleships looked like. as they were commissioned by the Navy to sail. The Seven Seas. Perhaps the most popular one of all was the Battleship Arizona BB-39. The USS Arizona was a unique battleship. It was commissioned in 1915 in New York and had a long history already. Before its fateful and final day at Pearl Harbor, Hawaii. Battleship Arizona, commissioned on 19th June 1915. The Arizona was the flagship of the Pacific Fleet. It weighed a massive 31,400 tons. The Arizona had an admiral on board it as well. Rear Admiral Isaac Kidd served U.S. Navy 1906 to 1941. The Arizona had its captain as well. Captain Van Valkenburg, years of service, 1909 to 1941. There's one more interesting thing about the Arizona. And the 26 years of service it had to its country.
It had never saw battle with another ship. But time was running short for both the Arizona and the rest of Pearl Harbor. Back in Washington, D.C., negotiations were not going well at all. Ambassador to Japan, Joseph C. Grew, was beginning to believe war was inevitable with Imperial Japan. Ambassador to Tokyo, Japan, Joseph Seagru in 1941. There was one more key player during this most troubled times. When America was about to fight war on three fronts. He was a friend as well as a person who President FDR often conferred with in times like this. Harry Hopkins, friend and advisor to FDR. This man also felt that one day FDR would have to declare war on Imperial Japan. There lived on the island of Hawaii about 150,000 actual Asian people who were of Japanese descent. Would they uprise once Imperial Japan attacked? With all these questions being asked and the negotiations failing, The winds of war was over the horizon. The only last question to ask was this. Was the United States prepared? Only time to tell. There are many statistics in our lives, but they never matter until we become one. My only son, became a statistic. Stand up and be counted to end the cycle of violence. Log on to thepeacealliance.org to find out how you can get involved. All right, everyone. Can we get a quiet on set? I need track three cued and audio ready. Camera three on preview and ready to fade. And we're ready to roll in five, four, three, two, one. Music in and fade camera three. Welcome to the GRTV studio. In this studio, Grand Rapids Community Media Center members have the ability to bring their experiences to life. If you have a hobby, skill, or experience you want to share, this is the perfect venue for you to showcase your talents and ideas. Whether it's a talk show, that's illegal 
Uh, you have to keep that in mind. You really shouldn't say things like that on television. <laughs> yeah. All right. A talent show or a sitcom? <laughs> Potential writers, directors, actors, or just techies. This is the perfect place for you to hone your skills. Here are the next dates for the available classes. For more information, check us out on our website at www.grcmc.org or stop in at 711 Bridge Street for a personal tour of the facility. Hope to see you there. Fade to black and music out. All right, that's a wrap, everybody. In early November 1941, the Imperial Japanese Navy had assembled their elite fighting machine at Coral Islands, better known as Tankin Bay. The next picture shows the locations of the Coral Islands. The negotiations were failing and the Imperial Japanese Navy was fueling their ships and getting quietly their planes ready. Here are some of the names of the Imperial Japanese Navy ships that were involved. The Agegai, the Karayahima, the Shugoshi, the Hirgo, the Tone. We're getting fueled and ready for the attack on Pearl Harbor. The Imperial Japan's intelligence were also asking the spies these following questions. That was, of course, intercepted by Purple in Washington, D.C. What kind of flowers bloom at Ho in the Hawaii at present? Are planes flying daily? Are the planes large ones? Are the planes flying day or night? All that Washington could do is wonder what these questions were about and ask this perplexing question. Just what was Imperial Japan up to? It was known in this time of history that Imperial Japan was to sneak attack their enemies. This time was no different than any other times for Imperial Japan. would discuss this proposal with President FDR who would all find this proposal unacceptable. On November 26, 1941, Admiral Yamamoto gives Admiral Naguma permission to sail to Hawaii and attack Pearl Harbor.
A total of 33 sailing vessels and 353 attack airplanes. The only hope that Pearl Harbor had was an 11th hour peace deal with the Imperial Japanese. But for now, peace on Earth was just an elusive dream. The Imperial Japanese Navy was on the move. The, this attack would one day surprise the world. Here is a brief outline of time before the attack on Pearl Harbor. Now, all hope for peace on Earth fails. December 6, 1941 was like any other day for both civilians and military personnel at Pearl Harbor. It was time for Christmas shopping for some civilians. And a night off the ship for sailors. The Navy had a band contest between musicians of some of the ships. Everything began to close up at about midnight. Many sailors were allowed to sleep late Sunday morning. Little did anyone realize what the next morning would bring. <laughs> hey, I'm Ted from GRTV, and I'm here to make a show about how to put a show on GRTV. All you got to do is have a tape, or a DVD, or a flash drive with your foot with your video on it, and you bring it down here to GRTV. We're at 711 Bridge Street. It's the second floor of the Bridge Street Library. Um, come on up. All you got to do is grab a form here, a GRTV application for Cablecast. I already filled this one out. It's got my name, name of the show, uh, length of the show, all real basic stuff about the show. And then uh, you want to read through this contract. Uh, it's got some basic legal obligation stuff. Sign a date at the bottom. And then you want to put your contact info so we can reach you, your phone number, your email address, your uh, 
whatever you've got to fill out for that, and then fill out a little survey on the back. And all you got to do is bring it in, hand it in to Liz, and you're done. That's it. You're done, son. Woo! You're done, son. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> I'm a dork. I like that. <laughs> okay, well, that was fun. Okay. All right. I think that was good. I think that was good. Hawaii, early Sunday morning. Everything was as usual, calm and peaceful. Many sailors were allowed to sleep in late because of the bank of competition the night before. Others got up early in time for Sunday morning mass. Everything appeared like it was going to be another normal day at Pearl Harbor. Except for the Imperial Japanese Navy, who are now standing on their aircraft carrier decks waiting for their orders. It was about 0600 hours when they were beginning to wait their orders. Their orders were given. Three words rang out for the Japanese pilots. Torah. 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 All hope for peaceful negotiations failed when the last memorandum from Tokyo arrived in Washington, D.C. Secretary of State Cordell Hall already knew what a bunch of lies it was and became unfriendly with the Imperial Japanese Foreign Minister. Imperial Japanese Foreign Minister Matsuka. General Marshall sends General Short the message to be prepared for an attack. But for many in Pearl Harbor that day, the message arrived too late. The Japanese pilots were already in. It would only take the Japanese pilots about 45 minutes to reach Aohu, Hawaii. This gave the, the pilots from Japan something to think about when the time would be right. Only two things now would stop the attack the rest of the way. Admiral Yamamoto ordered the pilots to avert the attack if these two things happened. If they were intercepted by enemy reconnaissance planes, or
if an 11th hour peace deal was reached. Unfortunately for Pearl Harbor, neither one of these things had occurred. Imperial Japanese pilots were to attack the air bases first. Kenosha Air Base, southwest side of Oahu, Wheeler Air Base, north of Pearl Harbor, and Hickam Air Base at Pearl Harbor. The Japanese pilots were to attack and destroy some 350 planes that were on the ground. The mini subs were to move in at the time of the air attack. The attack was to continue and went as planned, even as the new radar system known as Doppler radar was not used correctly to alert the fleet and time for defense. Time was running out for Pearl Harbor. The U.S. was at war with Imperial Japan. The next day, President FDR delivers the now famous speech. Day of Infamy Speech. General MacArthur and his force were driven off the Philippines that day as well. After the sneak attack by Japan, the mini-subs were beached on the island. On that fateful day, only two ships got underway. The USS Ward, a minesweeper that found and sunk one mini sub that day. And the Battleship Nevada. The Nevada, even though Heavily damaged was the only battleship to make it out that fateful day. That day the U.S. lost 8 battleships, 3 light cruisers, 3 submarines, 17 destroyers, and thousands of lives, both civilian and military.
Eventually, Admiral Kimball would begin planning how to fight back, but he is replaced by Rear Admiral Edwin T. Layton, who begins the campaign against Imperial Japan. Rear Admiral Edward T. Layton replaces Admiral Kimmel. The next four years would test the strength and leadership of the United States. Over the next four years, the war between the Axis and the Allies would bring new leaders. The Soviet Union would fight the Germans in Europe along with the Americans. The British Royal Navy would eventually find and sink. The battleship Bismarck and the Atlantic Ocean. General Eisenhower would invade Normandy with his men in Germany and win the war there with the help of the Russians. And the other famous general, General George S. Patton, would win the war in Italy. President FDR would die while he is in office. And a new president would rise up in office. President Harry S. Truman. The U.S. Navy would find and sink the world's largest battleship as well. Battleship Yamato on April 17th, 19. 45. The battleship Yamato would sink in the East China Sea. In the end, President Truman would give the orders to drop the atom bomb on both. Hiroshima, Japan and the other city Nagasaki, Japan. This brought the end of the war quickly and saved thousands of more lives that could have been lost if it wasn't brought to a quick end. General MacArthur returns to the Philippines as the military leader there. Imperial Japan signs the surrender papers on board the aircraft carrier Midway. All is peaceful and calm today at Pearl Harbor. A memorial is there for those who died there on the USS Arizona along with its Admiral and Captain. This show is dedicated to all those who gave their lives on that faithful day of December 7th, 19th. 